the new release of the Arcona 3.5. Yeah. Was that that, or should I say it again? Again. <laughs> okay. Hi, and welcome to the virtual boat show for the release and the new Arcona 3.5. Today we're gonna to talk about the UK sailmakers and the sales we're making for the new Arcona 3.5. Hi, my name is Oscar. I'm uh, working as a sailmaker for the last 15 years. Uh, I'm working at UK Sailmakers in Sweden and at the base here at the Stockholm Loft. I'm Michael Olsson, working here at UK Sailmakers for nearly four decades. Uh, and I have been developing the sales for Arcona almost or more than four decades. Started in the late 70s. Uh, mostly I've been racing a lot with the Arconas to ensure that uh, sales are uh, performing and that we will have the best design ever. We are going to test a little carbon X drive. Okay, all is perfect. To ensure the, the design and, uh, and the sail will be the best for the cruiser in the end. I'm working with the Arcona aftermarket and mostly the performance cruisers and the long distance cruiser like blue water cruising and stuff like that. So I ensure the sailors have the best gear to the, if they want to go to the Caribbean or just sail around here in the archipelago. So that's what I do and of course racing as well. but mostly this performance cruiser. So if you have a used Arcona, you're talking to me, but if you want to buy a new Arcona and have sales, you're talking to Michael. It all started in the late 70s uh, when uh, Arcona uh, got the first bo boat, uh, Aphrodite 25. Uh, we made sales for that one and then they designed the Arcona 32 in the middle of 80s. We started to race with that one and uh, then it has kept going with the Arcona 355, 36 uh, and then 400. And when the 400 came in 2001, uh, there were a lot of racing and we won a lot and uh, then Arcona sold a lot of boats and uh, we won everything. We got around uh, three times total and uh, we also have our own boat to race with. When uh, Arcona makes a new model, yeah. uh, we get the drawings and then we design the sails before the boat even have touched the water. Yeah. And then we develop yeah. the sails and then we, we sail with the boat for like five times in different conditions. Then we recap the sails because you can't do perfect sails just in a drawing. You need to, to fly them on the boat. So we do that for like five or six times before we do the, the first real design to the boat. This, this makes us a different uh, against the other sail makers that, that don't have that opportunity to test the boat and recap the sails and test and test before the first boat delivers the customer. So that means we have the perfect sails for the boat from the first day sailing. And that's good for the customer. We can go out racing his first club racing and win because he has perfect shape there. That's true. That's very true. Yeah. yeah. By racing a lot and a lot of hours, we can even develop a little bit more to get the boat uh, to perform really well. And we really understand the boat's needs. And in the end, it will be the benefits for the cruising sailor because he will have easier sail to tune and easier sail to sail faster with the boat without doing anything. It's just fit perfect. If, if we sail a boat a lot, which we, which we do, small adjustments like if you're raising the clue on the jig for like five centimeters, it, it looks like uh, that doesn't, people doesn't care about that. But when you tack, it maybe it makes attacking a lot easier. But it's, it's small changes that goes, it, that's important for the racing but get big improvements for the for the cruising guys as well. Uh, and that's the same with the with the roaches on the main. If you do like one centimeter smaller roach, it's gonna get free from the backstay or it's gonna touch lighter. So you don't need to jam the backstay when you're cruising and stuff like that. So the small stuff that makes the sails perfect. 
it's not only the sail cloth and the, the, the shape of the sail, it's small details around it. That, that's what you get when you sail a boat a lot, and that, that's what I kind of get from us, and what we can give them is when we sail your boat a lot, we can design the perfect sail, not just the shape, the measurements and the roach and stuff like that. A lot of work and effort, a lot of hours, but in the end, we will have perfect sails for the boat and for the cruiser to use. It always ends up winning. <laughs> That's what you want. Yeah. For us to go out and test the boats on the race course, we'll ensure that the sails and, and the boat really perform. And that's the only way to get to the point that you really understand that the boat is as fast as it could be. So yeah. when, when we're talking about the, uh, a new uh, Arcona 385, which is a new version of the 380, it's a totally it's a new good. boat. It's the totally new Arcona 385. But we can we, we will sail it when it's it's the water, but the sail pan is similar to the 380. So uh, we, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the different cloth you can change. If you're a performance cruiser, you can uh, choose the, this type of cloth. And if you're racing, you can choose this type of cloth and this type of setup. Because you have this, this, if you have the same sail pan, but you have different setups if it's for cruising, or if it's for racing, or if it's for long distance sailing. So it's the same boat, but you have different setups. So if you're, Going into racing, it may be like three type of jibs, one main, and two type of symmetric spinnakers, and some code sails, depending on which rule you sail under, if it's IRC or ORC or SRS. And when it's cruising, it's normally like one jib, an uh, all purpose jib, and a uh, mainsail, and some type of code zero as well, and maybe an asymmetric spinnaker. That's the two different styles if you're racing or if you're cruising. And then you can change different cloth on the, the on fabric. Uh, for all the time for the Arconas it's extra sales, which is low pass sales with content yarn from tag to glue and stuff like that. They are going like, they're not broken, they are- Continuous. continuous. Yeah, continuous from yarn, yarns. In normal it's carbon fiber, but we have like spectra for, for real cruising and long distance sailing. Uh, so that's that's the cloth we're using, and if it's Grand Prix racing, we're using our titanium cloth, which is a, a membrane cloth, uh, and it's it's same cloth for all the all the type of sailing, but the difference is the layers of taffeta. Is it pure racing? You don't have taffeta because you want light sails. If it's cruising, you want light sails, but you also want high longevity, so you have only one side of feta or double side of feta? Yeah, the big thing between uh, racing and cruising is uh, the tafetas, often. And uh, to make sure that the durability is there and you can use the sail for 10 years or more, you have to have tafeta on one or two sides. That's the only difference between racing and cruising. But the design of the sail will be exactly the same uh, depending on what kind of sail you are using, but it's almost the same. Yeah, we were talking about the, the different types of extra cloth. Uh, this is what we normally use for the Arcona yachts. It's extra carbon with one side of taffeta, and on the other side, it, it's part time taffeta. This, this is showing a jib. And we have extra taffeta in the leech where the jib hits the mast and the spinnaker pole. So that, then you get an extra protection. And we have extra in the foot because all our Kona yachts have this flat deck furler or under deck furler. So the, the, the foot gonna leans over the mantle. Stanchion. The over the stanchions. So that's why we use that. That will keep the sail for last for like 10 to 15 years if you do with the part-time taffeta on one side and, and taffeta on the other side and some UV cloth and stuff like that. Then it's gonna you know, let, have long, high long liberty. And the other thing we do for the Arconas is the X-Drive with Engimax fiber. It's a spectra fiber. It gets high long liberty, it's durability. 
and this gets white. Some people like white sails. If you have a blue hull, you need white sails. And this is the perfect choice for long distance cruising. Uh, the difference is just from the carbon is just that you change carbon to spectra fibers. Everything is the same. And this one has uh, UV cloth and leach and so. So this is what we do normally. So then you can choose like a lot of sails, like spectra, triradial, and stuff like that. If you're more into classic looking, but this is the this is how we do it. And this is, I think, the best combination uh, between performance, durability, longevity, and to a good cost. It's quite affordable. So that's how we do it. And here are we are the racing sails. And this is an extra carbon. Uh, you can see there is no taffeta at all. Of course, we can apply some taffeta on some certain spots that we really need, need them to get uh, sure that uh, it really lasts. Uh, and uh, here's an other version. It's an extra uh, carbon with taffeta with light skin. And then we have an, another one, extra carbon with polyester, one side taffeta. And then we have the Grand Prix one, the titanium side with light skin. This is a re really light Grand Prix racing material. Uh, and the, there is carbon inside, and there is no uh, break in the threads, it's continuous threads for all these types of sails. This is of course lighter than this one, but this is a lasting, long lasting sail. Yeah, but with every Arcona customer we have a good talk, we are talking, we, you don't do the, the sales discussion with the, <coughs> the boat seller, you do it directly with us. So that we, we don't we know what you want and it, we can design exactly what you want. It's just like a standard pack you get with a boat. It's not like you're buying a boat and this is your sales. It's a, we discuss with the client and see what fits in perfect and what he what type of sailing he's going to do. And then we can take a special this is the perfect sales for you. And that's delivered with the boat. And so th that's the difference between other sail makes sail makers and boat yards that you, you just get standard sales. Here is every sale is special for the for the customer. Yeah, here I'm working with the new developed Celtec jib for the Arcona 385, and it's the X Drive Carbon Black with black taffeta and black UV cover. And some small details is like we have the UV cover protecting the webbings, that to make it last longer. And in the clue we have UV cover protecting the the clue board, so the, the webbings are, are uh, sealed from the UV protecting protection, and and it looks nice, it looks fast when it's black. And it's, it is yeah. fast, or it just looks fast? It is fast, it's super fast. When it's black, it's fast. And this one has vertical battens, for it, you, it's made for furling head stay, and yeah. It's black. Will you say this is our like what is this your best one medium? Where are we on the scale? Yeah, this is the this hill is designed for short hand racing and uh, performance cruising. So you can use the same sail when he's cruising with his family and when he's uh, racing in the, the Wednesday Cup and the, this short hand races like Nordic Yachts Open and stuff like that. So it's a winning sail. For both, both types sail. And the expect the, the lifetime of this sail with this uh, UV protection and the extra taffeta in the leech and foot it will be like 10 to 15 years, depends on how much you sail. But if you're sailing la like 1,000 nautical miles a year, it maybe it's 12 years. Wow. So that's good. That's good for a performance sail. So. If you have an Arcona or figure out to buying a 385, just contact us and we can help you to discuss what type of sales you should have for your boat and your type of sailing and 
if you have an old Arcona or a to nearly new one, you can contact us and we can help you discuss what's the best for you. And yeah, so this was everything for us this time. And uh, hope you learned something. And don't uh, hesitate to call us or text us if you want some help with the boat. Thank you. Thank you for watching. UK sailmakers have been uh, working with different shipyards for a long, long time. And uh, we are uh, well known for uh, making a lot of uh, sales for uh, both of the West Coast and East Coast. Uh, this uh, is a way to, to work uh, very near the, the boat designer from the beginning. And uh, we are trying to develop the sales uh, from the start and help uh, to set up the rigs and so on. And uh, from the beginning, we are involved 100% to get the uh, perfect data from uh, everything. And uh, then you can uh, make it uh, 3D in the CAD system uh, to ensure that it's perfect uh, from the beginning. You can say because we need it's probably Scandinavian's biggest sales law. Mm -hmm. With uh, we have. Over the years, they're doing over 2,000 sales for their Kona yard and their Arcona owners. And uh, we have two lots of Sweden, one on the Swedish west coast and one on the Swedish east coast. And we also have lots in Denmark, Finland and Norway. And some lots in the UK, of course. So wherever you sail here up in the northern Europe, we have, we have a cover if you have some problems or something like that. And of course, of the, in the rest of the world too. Yeah, we have 50, 55 lot uh, worldwide. And I believe we are back. So I am here with Oscar from UK Sale. Hi. 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 Um, this is the magic of the internet. You were just with us in a presentation at the loft. Now you're here. Yes. In a new outfit. Perfect. Yes, uh, and obviously we invited Oscar because he's a sailmaker and we are in a sailboat, which requires some tanks to put up on the mast to be able to go forward. Uh, we've gotten in some questions uh, from our uh, viewers and I thought we'd do the most general ones first. Um, if you want to go blue water cruising, you know, you know that you have the dream, you leave the office behind and just sail towards the horizon. What sort of downwards, uh, downwind sail would you put on it, a It depends on how big the crew is. It, normally it's just like two people. And then I will recommend a asymmetric spinnaker with uh, uh, a sleeve or on a furler. It depends on how deep you make the sail. If it's straight downwind, you normally have an A2, the biggest uh, asymmetric spinnaker. And then it will be easier to handle it if you have a sleeve. If you're doing shorthanded. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to take your husband or your wife uh, and sail towards the horizon, asymmetrical spinnaker with the sleeve, cockpit. Um, and yeah, this is um, the sort of next question links into this. Do you recommend a snuffer or a top-down furler? Uh, both uh, things are good. Uh, I think the snuffer or the sleeve, it works very easy when, the, when you have a big, uh, big sail, like the A2. Uh, is it a smaller like an A3 with the, than the fur is good. And for those of us who aren't sail makers, what is the difference between an A2 and an A3? What is this letter yeah, combination? A, yeah, the A stands for asymmetrical and uh, numbers like 2, 4, 6 are uh, uh, downwind sails. And uh, when they are 3, 5 and 7 like that is when it's region sails. So uh, A2 is more for downwind sailing and uh, the A3 is more for reaching, and that's why the A3 is smaller, and then it's going to be easier to furl, because when you furl a big sail, uh, and when it's in furl, it's a lot of cloth yeah. flying, so you need to take down the furler directly. So that's why the, when you have the sleeve on, it just then the sail is away. Hmm. And then we have a question from Jimmy. Okay. Uh, Jimmy asks, what is X-Drive? And what is special compared, um, what makes it different from other cloths? Uh, X-Drive is our premium cloth. 
for like this type of boat, bigger boats, I got smaller of course, but uh, it has constant yarns. The yarns go from clue to tack, so it's not capped anyway. Okay. That makes it uh, stronger and very light, and you can do it with part-time taffeta or taffeta on one side, so you can make it for each type of sailor. That uh, so, so every sail is like unique. You don't uh, buy a cloth and cut it and sew it together. It's you make the sail cloth made for every sail. Oh, so it's custom to a yeah, boat. Yeah, yeah, very custom. And and you can get the extra for all the Okona range. Yeah, it, that's like the standard on an Okona. Yeah. And uh, just as a reminder, if you have more questions to Oscar after this, uh, you can email yeah. um, UK Sailmakers. If you have any more questions uh, to Arcona Yachts or, or want to book a private meeting, you can write in the chat and say, I want to book a meeting because uh, only we can see it. And then we can contact you via email. So if you want to book a private meeting to chat about boats and sales and X drive kit for your new Arcona or anything right in the chat um and um talking about the x drive that is a special sale call we got a question can i go racing with my cruising sales yes of course actually the arcona 380 who won the golf down run yeah it has had his cruising main so of course you can <laughs> yeah you can win the big competition with your cruising sales for international viewers, winning Gotland Unt in Sweden is a is a big deal. Yeah, yeah. and the whole Scandinavia, I think. Yeah, so you it's a offshore race in the Baltics. You go yeah. around the island of Gotland and then back to Stockholm. Yes. Um, and they had a extra main with the single taffeta on. Yeah. Yeah, which is nearly the same as we deliver as a the the cruising sail for the three eighty and three eighty five. Yeah. Um. We have a new question here, again, with these uh, letter combinations that is not really my ballpark. What is the difference between an AS5 and an A5 spinnaker? Uh, I, th I, I think it's uh, AS stands for asymmetrical and A is it's the same. Yeah, or, okay, well then if we, what is the difference between an S5 and an A5? S5 is symmetrical. It's a normal spinnaker like with poles. Uh, and A stands for asymmetrical, so that's the difference. And you saw on the tour earlier, this boat is kitted for an asymmetrical spinnaker, or we say jenniker most of the time here in Sweden. Yeah. Um, but you can also get this boat with spinnaker. Of course. Yeah. So when you, normally when you're cruising or shorthand racing, you go for the asymmetrical because it's easier to handle. And when it's uh, like Grand Prix racing and racing with full crew, you have symmetric spinnakers. And then you have the, this big moth head, the, S2, mm -hmm. and you have a smaller like S3 or S4. Yeah. Uh, and then you have some kind of cold sail and normal jib top. So you have, but it depends on which rule you sail under. If you're sailing uh, racing, you can race under ORC, IRS, or SRS in Sweden. Uh, and the, the rule, uh, you, you, have, you have to rate good in the rule. And the rule, uh, so in Sweden, we have some type of sales for rule, and in or so you can have another type of sales. Yeah. So depending on what kind of racing you want to do with your boat, contact UK Sailmakers, and they can discuss with you what sort of kit to get depending on what kind of racing you would like yeah. to do. So you have the best rating. Yes. And the best sales, then you win. Yeah. And speaking of racing, all um, sailboats come with a main, but will there be a main sail with a fat head? No. For the 385. No. No, just pinhead. Yes. Copy. Hopefully. Um, and then what is the better for cruising? We got a question. A code zero or uh, an asymmetrical spinnaker? The the code this is a jib boat, so when you're not going upwind when you're reaching, you need some extra power of, of in light wind, we're talking light winds here. And then you can choose either the code zero or the uh, asymmetrical. The code zero is much easier to handle. You can uh, hoist it when in harbor and have it like un unfurled and then furl it out, furl it in, and that's so it makes much easier to sail it and mm -hmm. it's easier to handle. So easier to handle, uh, the code zero is easier to handle. Um, so now comes the question, it sort of ties in with all the questions about these downwind sails. 
if you were to choose one downwind sail as a cruiser, uh, what would you recommend? I will go for the Coke Zero. Uh, you can't sail that deep as you can with the asymmetric gun, but you can sail it wing on wing like you do with a normal gen or something like that. Yeah. So so it, you can sail deep with it as well. So, but it's not, you don't have to go that fast, but it will work. So it, for uh, cruising, of course, the normal way to have it is like a main, standard main and a non-overlapping jib uh, and a code zero. That's the standard ballpark for a cruiser. Yeah. And wing on wing just is when you have the code on one side and the main on the other side. Yes. Yes. Uh, common in, in racing as well when you need to go really, really flat. Um, we got a question about jibs. Yeah. How close, how important is it to have the jib foot close to the deck? Uh, for racing, it's very important, but for cruising, it's not necessary. Well, it depends on who you want to beat, really. Yeah, of course. You have to remember the Arcona buyers are always. Sort but of... but Arcona, Arcona owners always have the the foot on the deck because they have the flat deck rollers. So that's not a problem. It would be like that. So, so we already solved that one. Yeah. That's standard. Um, so we did have um, a longer question that I will try and repeat and we'll see if you can answer it. What do you think about cruising in 20 knots of wind, but then going to the wind increasing even more? So um, for the Swedish viewers, that's going from, say, 10 meters per sec up to cooling um, like gale cool. force winds. Yeah. yeah. Um, is it a good idea? To put on a, a second furler um, or a second four stay with a smaller jib, uh, sort of further in. Yeah, is it for cruising? The normal way to do it is you have the, you have the standard jib and you have the main, and when it goes up to like twenty knots, you have maybe one reef and the jib, and the best way is to, to shift the uh, jib. Either you have uh, you take down the jib. It can be a problem when when it's uh, vertical battings. Then you have an inner four stay with a smaller jib, uh, you know, for a heavy body jib. Yeah. So that's and the inner four stay can be a further or it can be a like like a, like a Denima four stay with soft tanks. And having a further versus having a Denima four stay with soft tanks. I think the the Denima four stay uh, that you can take away and they have it uh, with the mast. It's, the easiest way to do it. The easiest way to do it. Yeah. yeah. So it, I guess everything is just a compromise. So do you want the sail to be optimum for full crew racing, short-handed racing, easy downwind? It's sort of individual to what you like in your boat. Yeah, and and but but the, the to sail the Arcona in like twenty knots of reefs is not. It's a stiff boat. It it can handle it with uh, one reef and full jib, and you can furl in like. You can reef the jib, yeah, the standard jib, because on the exercise we can put in like, like extra fiber to it, so you have like a reefing point, like in pearl. It's not the the best thing is to have a second jib, but if you don't want to go up on deck, it it works to so just reef it like two three turns. Okay, so benefits of a furler, and then um, or can you? How many reefs do you normally put in a mainsail? For an Arcona, but like standard is two. Standard is two. Yeah, that's the normal way. If you're going like uh, offshore racing, or if you go like blue water cruising, yeah, you can have a a third reef, and that's quite high. So have it like a, when a reef is like a tri sail in the area. Yeah. So can put in an extra reef, and that's easy to do. Uh, can you do that afterwards if you have? Yeah, you can do it afterwards, but yeah. it's easy to do it when you buy the new place. Okay. So if you plan to go blue water cruising and order a new main. Ask for an extra reef. Yeah, or you can have a tricep. Or you that, can have a tricep. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of cruising, how long does the sail last? If you take this uh, X drive uh, carbon, yeah. the Saturn, with uh, one side of FETA and some extra of FETA in the leech, if you sail around 1,000 nautical miles a year, it's between 10 to 15 years. 10 to 15 years. And if you sail more, obviously the yeah, lifespan shortens. But between 10 and 15 years, if that's, that's the normal. And if you want, so this is more for cruising performance. If you have a more race setup, how often do you recommend changing your kit? Uh, 
the main norm you can have a racing main for like five to eight years yep and the jibs something like that it depends on what, what type of uh, racing it is is it offshore racing yeah you can you need to change more often and is is it like short hand sailing uh, nearly the same as the cruising ship okay so um quite long lifespan so a, a good sail is a good investment but also you need to take care of your sails what is the main how do you take care of your sails to make them last uh, you leave them at the corner and we pick them up and you uh, service on them you should a new sail the first three years you don't, it's not necessary with service if you don't see it it's a, a small problem but uh, then you do it every second year or something like that and if it if it's racing you do it every year okay so just like you hand in your car to the mechanic you hand in your sail so because that's your engine so it needs to yeah. be checked yeah um we had a question before about buying a bigger engine for your Kona, and i just suggest buying a bigger sail yeah more sales more sales yeah, yeah. uh or bigger sail wardrobe so spend your money on the sales because i mean we're buying sailboats um um and um we just got a shout out from one of our viewers who thinks uh he liked your video oh yeah. thank you perfect and we should also shout out to warner who was behind the camera doing it for you yeah um they're cool um and with that um what is your email address will we find it on the uk sailmakers yeah so we can text it here it's oscar.scooting at uk sailvision.com okay so we will easier if you write it here yeah we will add that to uh the event um or on the facebook event so that you can contact uk if you need sales um preferably do that after you've contacted noel or us to buy a new arcona and then we'll kit you up for probably the best selling experience that you'll have in the summer so um yeah i think we'll say thank you for that and um, yeah email us and if you didn't catch oscar's email or if you can't find it email or Kona and we'll pass you through. 